Hi everyone, this is Dee Keys, bringing you an elementalist's guide to the aquatic ruins fractal. In this first part, you'll fight three groups of crate. For each group, you'll want to LOS behind a nearby pillar, stack might in a fire field by using your water three skill, preferably into the statue so you don't move, and then arcane brilliance and arcane wave on an enemy when it gets to the fire field. You'll also want signet of fire for additional DPS, and whirlpool for the second group you'll have one slot open to your discretion. The second group of crate is the largest and most difficult group. Again, LOS behind a pillar and stack might as someone pulls the crate. And once you are done stacking might, use whirlpool form for the additional HP and for the ability to cleave down most of the enemies. You can also use air five to help control the enemies and make sure they don't swim away. Be careful of the poison fields that the crate will put down. They are hard to spot in the water if you don't see the AoE circle, will deal hefty amounts of damage, and apply poison to you. You can see that my party mates and I are using Scal Venom for this fractal. This is so that we can apply weakness to our enemies. As you are killing crate, you'll also have to free fishermen from cages. If you are unable to interact with a cage, then one of the crate has probably gotten stuck in the ceiling. Continue on with the fractal, and then the crate will swim down so that you can engage them, and then open the cage. After freeing all the fishermen, you'll have one of two paths to take. In the path not featured in this guide, you and your party mates will be transformed into dolphins. Stack swiftness before you are transformed, and hug the right wall as you traverse through the rooms full of stealth crate. To reveal the crate, use your one skill, and then use your two and three skills to evade them. Skill 5 will help res allies. In this dark room, either you or one of your party mates can solo it, or you can stick together as a group. You'll want to take the glowing seaweed so that you can stay safe from the piranha that are lurking in the dark waters. I like to have Glyph of Elemental Harmony and Mist Form on my bar for this room. That way, I can apply swiftness to myself and get out of sticky situations. When approaching the veteran crate, Double dodge so that you can avoid its attacks in CC. Having stability and Aegis from a guard also helps. Once you pass the crate, you can ignore the seaweed and move on to the jellyfish boss. For this boss, take DPS-oriented skills such as Arcane Brilliance, Signet of Fire, and Arcane Wave. You'll also want a Stun Break. My preferred Stun Break is Glyph of Elemental Power, so that I can maintain Burning or Chill on my enemies to help improve DPS or be a little bit more defensive. To stack Might, use your Fire 2 skill, which produces a fire field. To aim it, you'll want to look up, move around a little bit to lock your camera, and then cast it. It will appear in the ground in front of you. In underwater combat, Fire Auto Attack has the best cleave, and Air is also pretty powerful. For water and earth, make sure you supplement the auto attack with the DPS from the two skills as well. Use your elite skill if a lot of little jellyfish spawn. At 75% health, the jellyfish will start using its agony inducing swallow attack. The tell for this attack is that its tail will start swirling around. As soon as you see the tell, you can use air 4 or earth 4 to interrupt this attack. However, each of these skills have a long cast time, so it's very easy to be late. This attack happens once every 20 seconds, so you can alternate between using these two skills to interrupt the attack. Other classes, such as Guardians and Mesmers, can also interrupt this attack. Between interrupts, you'll also want to go back to Fire Attunement, cast Fire 2, then to Water for Water 3, and then use Arcane Brilliance and Arcane Wave, if possible, so that you can stack Might for your party to help this battle go faster. As you can see, I usually stay out of melee range for this battle because I do not need to be in melee range to attack my enemies. Though I do stay nearby so that I can fully benefit from my traits and so that I can more easily stack Might on my allies. Well, that's the Underwater Ruins Fractal in a nutshell. Thanks for watching!